Hey, and we are live. How's everybody doing today? Hope you can hear me okay. If you can't, let me know. Well, maybe I better get over here to the comments so that I can see. All right, who we got? Well, we've got uh, two of my fabulous mods. Hey, Geek Mom, good to see you. Um, we have a little bit, of course, my super mods. Uprising 771, how you doing? Gail, who has donated. We thank you so much, Gail. Um, we'll get to that in a second here about how this is going to go. Um, <clears throat> Ronan, what's up, Ronan? You know, some people say, oh, it takes 10 minutes to say hi to everybody in the room. So, uh, yeah, you know, anyway, <laughs> you know, these are my friends. These are my friends. So go to hell. Anyway, uh, D's here. All right, D, how you doing? Tommy, always Tommy. He makes it. And there's Music Man. Uh, we're going to show you some stuff here in just a minute. You're not going to believe Music Man. Angela, what's up? And Woe Free, Raggedy Susan, Charles, how's it going? Ronan is here. Get away. I already said hi to you, Ronan. But good day, mate, to you too. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cindy, hey, first time in here. Well, welcome in. My new fiance, RM. I made a comment in a uh, Discord uh, group that I share with some people that I'm so enamored of uh, RM's work that I don't know if they're a male, a female, or if R is a male or. And M is a female. I want to marry them. Um, I'm sure Laura will understand. Um, I want to marry them. And but now if R if if R is a female and M is a male, I don't know if that would work. But I'm down to try. Anyway, um, <laughs> but welcome R and M. Um, going to be looking at some more of R and M's work um, in the next live. Uh, this live we're going to be looking at something. I think you'll enjoy this. Um, Anonymous one is here. How you doing? And why does the name Cindy always make me think of, of, of Thanksgiving? I, it's for some reason, when I hear the name Cindy, I think about Thanksgiving. I don't know. Now, I have a sister named Cindy, but she's a half-sister, and I, you know, barely knew her or anything. Uh, Debbie, what's up? Hey, um, I have to tell you, we had some interesting things happen yesterday. <laughs> first of all, we're on our way back. My, my, I have twin grandsons and they turned 12 and, um, we were on our way back from Logansport. And, uh, first of all, while we were in Logansport, while we were in Logansport, shoot. All right, Kate, Debbie Leard, how you doing? Um, Name of many pilgrims. Yes. Thank you, Chooch. I, I knew it. See, there had to be some kind of logical explanation. Um, so anyway, <laughs> while we're at, uh, while we're in Logan Sport. Now, guys, when I was a kid in Logan Sport, okay, I was a skater. All right. I was a pretty good skater. You know, um, they actually did. They called me wheels for a while. I, <laughs> you know, arrogant asked me. I let him do it. But anyway, uh, but I was a really good skater. And I wanted to like show off a little bit for Lori, you know. So we're at the skating rink and it's really dark. And I'm not sure if my glasses had time to lighten up because I had my other ones that get dark in the sun. And we're out there, you know, and, and Laura's like, oh, wow, I'm skating back. Hey, baby, I'm skating backwards and everything, you know. And and uh, Laura's like really getting impressed. And I'm thinking, hey, how you like that, baby, you know. And then I let go of her because I wanted to, you know do a little stuff I used to do, you know, 30, 40 some years ago. I don't know. And I'm looking behind me and I'm like, you know, that there's like a little low wall, but I'm looking at the wall beyond that. And I'm like, oh yeah, I got a few more feet. Boom. Slammed into that wall, hit the ground, skinned up this, this elbow pretty good. But this one, we thought it was broken. I couldn't move it. I couldn't do anything with it. I could barely lift it. So we go to the hospital, get an x-rayed. They come out and they're like, well, there's no break. And we're both like, <laughs> you know, like you're all giddy and everything. And then um, we, we're heading home. And it, I mean, it hurts like hell. We're heading home. And, of course, Laura had to drive. Thank God. <laughs> no, thank you, the Buddha. But uh, Laura had to drive. So I'm on my phone. And I'm looking at stuff, and I, I would think I was actually talking a little bit about uh, uh, Tennessee kicking Alabama's ass. What about it? 
And uh, <laughs> um, so we're on 465. We're going, well, you go, you, you were driving, you were doing like speed limit, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she was doing about 55, 60. There was enough 60. traffic, I couldn't go any faster. Yeah, you know, about 55, 60. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear Laura say, <clears throat> Laura will say, oh, my God. She goes, oh, my God. And right away, I knew it was something because she doesn't, she usually says, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and she said, oh, my God. And I looked up. And this car came zooming along. I mean, they had to be doing 80 at least. Zooming along, went right in front of us, continued into the next lane, went sideways and straight into the median at like 80 miles an hour. It was in just unbelievable, surreal. Uh, the car exploded and it just spun around and, and we didn't hit it. We missed them. I looked back. I didn't see anybody hit it. So... Um, Probably, you know, we we would have gone back, but it was like, you know, there's a lot of construction in that area and everything. And, and you know, we there were plenty of witnesses. They didn't need us. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't need us. And we, we it was like, you know, nuts, you know. So we said to hell with it. Anyway, so we had a very eventful day. My <laughs> my arm here is I can still just barely move it, but I'm going to be able to type. And uh, I wanted, I, I had Laura, I had this great idea, but you didn't get home in time. But I had this great idea to do this thing where, well, it could have been, that's, <laughs> now I'm not going to show them that one. That one's too mean. I, oops, I accidentally put it up there. Shoot. Uh, how do I get it down? Um, oh, well, I'll have to leave it there for a while. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> couldn't have to do a nicer Anyway, peanut baby, don't be careful of the, the stand there. So I was going to have her sitting here and tell you about how she's 100% behind the book idea because there's some people uh, in like in Facebook and everything trying to make it look like I'm just trying to get out of a job and all that shit, you know. And it's like the field, <clears throat> a lot of you know what I was doing. Um, I told you, you know, what I what I did. Um, it's a place where, um, uh, it's a place where you will, learn. no, no, no Queens right. It's a place where we, uh, buy back, uh, returns like large lump, big shipments of returns and, um, for like lighting stuff and it's home stuff and, um, resell it like on eBay and Amazon. And we like sell it all everything that comes with it. we sell the pallets and the gaylords and everything we you know anything to make a little money right well this time of year toward the end of the year nobody's doing returns because basically they're gearing up for christmas and all that so right now it's like one day they actually had us dumping water on the floor and pushing the the dust from, <laughs> you know so it's make work and um it's nothing for me to take those months off. The only thing was that I have, I can't, I can't make her support both of us and everything. So, and all five of our animals and stuff. Oh, six, six with Nero. Yeah. Did you give him? Not yet. Okay. They, I got them though. Um, but anyway, uh, no, it's not a work at home career, Lulu. It's, it's, I go into the building, but, um, and it, it's not a young man's job, but, you know, these unbreakable bones here. Yeah. <laughs> That's no doubt, because I was sure it was broke, too. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, I was going to have her say that she was completely behind it. And then I was going to come up behind her, you know, and I was going to say, hi, I'm Bill Clinton. <laughs> and and uh, I, I approve this message, you know, and, <laughs> and then come back around here. But uh, so, anyway, that's what I was going to have you here for. But that's okay. Love you. Um, can you get me the sure because it's in there? I have this thing that she made for me that uh, keeps the ice pack in my uh, <laughs> I can't believe it wasn't broken. I, I don't know. I I haven't I have not hit anything that hard since I was in high school, and there was this kid I can't remember his name now, but we were playing uh, it was a football game, and the dude uh. I was running my ass off because it was like the only pass I ever intercepted in my whole career. And I was <laughs> running my ass off. And at Pioneer, we had these, uh, uh, the light posts were like right next to the field. And the kid like just got me with his 
hands enough to push me out of bounds. And I hit this, I hit the pole with my arm up like this. And I knew it was broke, but it wasn't. <laughs> anyway, now uh, briefly, let me uh, explain again for those of you that if you don't not, don't know what the book thing is. Um, I'm a writer. I, I That's kind of what I went to school for when I went to uh, University of Annapolis. A lot of it was for, thanks, baby. English lit and writing and stuff like that. And then the rest of it I filled in was history and psychology things. So um, they, uh, you know, it, it was a good program and I did a lot of writing for it. And um, I, I now um, have uh, a catalog of all of this writing and everything, but I've never really done anything with it. And Laura's always been on me about writing a book. And I decided, okay, I could do that because I can take the time off work to do it. But the only thing is, if I take the time off work, I'm not making any money and I don't want to make her support us. So I, I came up with the idea um, actually from my my favorite artist, Cherry Pop and Daddies, because they're not like a big time, you know, uh, top group these days. The way they do their albums is they crowdfund them. They tell you, okay, if you donate this amount here, You'll get a free signed copy of the album. You'll get a if you donate this much, you'll get a mention. You'll get all that, but then you get a mention in the album sleeve. Like we thank these people, and you'd be able to see your name in there. But anyway, so my idea was to just let people donate whatever they can afford or what they were, whatever they feel like doing. And um, for for probably I'm saying right now it's going to be probably two months because that's probably that's my estimate of how long it's going to take me not only to write the book, because I'm going to write eight to 10 hours a day, like I would be working, um, not only to write it, but also to um, edit it. And then to, I, I got to check out the various public, public publication options. One of them is going to be self-publication. Another one, I can go with a partner type thing. I've already looked into some of it, but um, once I get that done um, and everything, I will be returning to work. And then the donation thing is going to stop. Because like I said, for this channel, the only money I want to make is for Luchis. And um, that's why I'm, you know, the, the channel is monetized, but the donations, you know, everything that I make off the channel from YouTube, I give to Luchis. So that's totally separate from what I'm doing now. And I don't want to make money. People are like, oh, you're trying to make money off the girls. No, I'm going to give the book to you. You know, I don't want to make money. And then after I give it to you, you can give it to anybody else for free. So it's not like I'm going to be out there selling it. It's more like a, a it's kind of like a something I'm returning to you for taking the time to watch my videos and stuff. And it's going to be an interesting book. It's going to have some humor. Like it's going to be like this live stream. It's going to have some humor. It's going to be human. It's going to be real. You're going to be able to verify the stuff that's there. There's not going to be any lies or bullshit. And it's not going to be about the case. It's not going to be trying to solve the case or you know, discussing a lot of the finer details of the case or anything. It's going to be more about like my experiences as a content creator, how I got to be a YouTube content creator. I never freaking ever saw myself sitting here. Um, but how I also, um, I, I navigated, you know, as you all know, through the DP thing. And how did that happen? That little period of time, you know, you can see it happening if you watch the videos and you can see the evolution coming. You can see me sitting there almost ready to just say, guys, look, I really don't think he did it at some point. And um, everything I went through leading up to that point is it's going to be in there. You're going to be able to hear that. You're going to see the human side and um, there'll be some things revealed that you don't know. And, and it'll be great. It'll be great. Um, I'm going to I'm going to work really hard on it because, man, I, you know, you guys know I love you. I mean, I love you guys so much and um, I really want to give you something nice, you know, and I really think that we are getting close. There's my main man right there. <laughs> um, hey, dude, if you're watching, uh, I really do feel like um, we're close if especially if things go the way they may go here in the next month. Um, here's the thing. <clears throat> I know it's anecdotal, but we're driving through Carroll County yesterday after we left Logan Sport and on the way there. 
And I was seeing a lot of Mark Pinkard signs. I saw a lot of uh, uh, Tony Liggett signs. But you expect that. He's part of the machine. I saw an awful lot of Mark Pinkard signs. <laughs> so that's how you know things are going well there. And I really think that, uh, oh, hey, Cindy, what's up? Cindy is also a donor. Thank you so much, Cindy. Um, She's awesome. <laughs> she, she's pretty much the most awesome person in the world. Next to Laura, of course. But anyway, um, the, uh, the thing I wanted to talk most about today, okay, is going to be, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know, again, part of the book will be, how I arrived at where I am right now. And it kind of, you can see it, like again, you can see it happening among the videos, you know, to where I got to the point where I wasn't planning on revealing. <clears throat> I wasn't planning on revealing Ron as my POI, as my suspect, um, that night. But I just felt like, man, it's, it's rolling. I'm just going to let it go. And um, I, you know, so, but that, I think it was so many questions. Um, I just felt at that moment, I had just made the perfect case, you know, Jules, what's up? And I wanted to move clocks. How's it going? I wanted to move clocks, but, but while I was moving clocks, I wanted to <laughs> present to you the idea that I had, come to know was the only way that, that it could have happened. I mean, if you think about it, it, ex it just answers every damn one of those nagging questions that everybody has. So anyway, <clears throat> Ashley Higgins, how you doing? Um, we got a big event coming up this week that I think is going to, uh, it just depends on how it goes. And I actually might try since I've taken this leave of absence and I don't have to, to be anywhere at nine until five or six or whatever. <laughs> I think I might actually attempt to be there in the courtroom for Kagan's pre-trial hearing, pre-trial conference. Mm -hmm. um, now they may order the thing cleared or whatever. So you can't get in there, but you know, if they do, then, you know, whatever. But <laughs> if I can get in there, it might be interesting just to be in there. What I'm expecting is I'm expecting uh, them to finalize the deal, at least finalize it. Uh, if not, sign it, take it, you know, and then um, <clears throat> it, it, I don't think they would actually uh, do the the sentencing at that particular time, I think they would probably put it off maybe another time, but they could, you never know. But a lot of people think that the deal that Kagan made was for, you know, to turn his dad in for Delphi. I don't think it had anything at all to do with Delphi. It may have been to turn his dad in, but I don't think it's for Delphi because I think, you know, it wasn't Kagan at all that was behind some of the worst stuff. I think it was his dad. And I think they were trying to find a way to prove that. And I think that's what that river search was about. So. Anyway, hello, Ophelia. Yeah. <laughs> Bill feel you. He will. I'll tell you what. All right. So we are going to watch something here that I watched um, recently. And I remembered back about now, oh, man, oh, at least six months ago or so. Um, and I came across this channel and I said, you know, they said we have photographic evidence that Ron Logan was on the bridge. And I was like, you know, <laughs> right. You know, and I, I made some comment or anything. Well, then after I started, 
you know, exploring this stuff and seeing what was going on. And I realized that that was Ron on the bridge. I, um, I was like, you know, I actually went back and I was probably still in the comments. And I said, man, I'm here to eat some crow. You, uh. <laughs> so like I said, if I find people like R&M that can present something so much better than I can, um, you know, I'm not saying I have D or ADD or anything like squirrel, but <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to, what the hell, why is my game not on here? I was trying to get my game. Give me just a second so I can try. I wanted to have the Colts over here so I could at least keep an eye on it. Um, what happened to it? So anyway, <laughs> see, it's not the game. What the hell are you doing? Well, maybe, it, maybe I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, we're going to take a look at this because the uh, the proof is there. And like I said, it was, you know, a lot of times we have confirmation bias and stuff like that. But a lot of times it's just pure arrogance. Like, you know, I've said before, I could have figured this out a long time ago if I hadn't been of the mindset that, you know, well, you can't do anything more with that image because, you know, it's it pixels or pixels. You got what you got. You know, I, I got to realize that I took digital photography at, at U of I, but I took it like 12 years ago or something. So the stuff I learned is all like ancient history. You know, we were working with uh, dinosaur bones and, and, you know, dirt and stuff, you know, compared to what they do now. So we're going to take a look at something here. And um, if you haven't seen it before, I, I urge you to subscribe to him as I do with R&M and Chooch. Don't forget little Chooch because Chooch, man, I'm telling you, comedy is a good way to get a message across. And I use it here on this channel. People want to talk about, you know, oh, well, you laugh so much and you're talking about something so, tra yeah, we know how tragic it was, okay? But we can't go along all the time. Do, 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 do. I mean, come on, man. You know, life has to go on. And I happen to think that if it's possible at all, that I think the girls are somewhere watching this chooch and this other stuff, you know, and, and maybe me. And they're okay with it, you know. <laughs> I mean, I I don't believe in in like spiritual stuff like that. I you know, but it's possible. So, but I really don't think. And like I said, so many people want to want to bother the patties with you know uh, the one guy that was like, you know, what if I show this to Becky? You know, how you know Becky ain't watching it? How you know Becky couldn't have shown it to you? You know, you don't know whether she watches me or not. You know, so kiss my ass. Anyway, <laughs> rant over. Now, let's take a look at this. As always, I'm not sure if you guys can hear the sound, you know, uh, if you have to listen to mine, or I think you're hearing it on your own. So if you can't hear it, let me know. And we'll go ahead and uh, watch this real quick here. It's about like eight minutes long, maybe. So we will check this out. Not sure if there's sound on that one.
Okay, I think I'm back now. Anyway, that's, I think I got most of it in. Let me make sure here. Okay, yeah, I think so. All right, but watch that on your own. Um, there might have been like another minute or so left in it. Um, watch it on your own. It's on uh, image detection and analysis. Or no, image analysis and detection. I'm sorry. Image analysis and detection. Um, let me uh, put that up here real quick. Kind of hard with my arm all bent up. All right, I'm going to put that up as a banner, and uh, people can take a look at it. Um, that's where you want to go. Um, image analysis and detection on YouTube, they have some more stuff. Some of it's a little longer. Um, if you're still on the fence or something, take a look at it, consider it. Now, I know there's the whole thing about the voice, but yeah, like I said, you have to understand that if I could do something with that, I think what's happening is that a lot of times if I try to do anything with my soundboard, I don't think it's doing anything to what you're hearing. I think you're hearing it directly from the recording. So I would have to actually make my own recording of it. I can try, but I don't know if even that's enough. It's just, you have to understand that recordings change the sound of things. It just does. So it's hard to, you know, I mean, I, when I play my bass, I know how it sounds when I'm standing here. When I listen to it recorded, I'm like, really? That Does it sound like that? That's that's weird, you know, because I hear things I don't hear when I'm playing. So, um, <clears throat> Here's the problem with that. Um, let me uh, take this machine here. Um, right here. Okay, let me get that going again. Um, the thing about that is I've explained this in another live, but I'm going to give you a break and I'm gonna go ahead and answer it. <laughs> um, but it's a good question because honestly, I don't think anybody saw a bridge guy. They have these drawings of people. Okay. And, the, and that's a good point because I wanted to say this anyway. People say, well, they're looking for a young guy though. Are they? Think about it. They put out a young sketch, right? Look nothing like the sketch before it. Okay. So why not? If they would have put out another sketch, why wouldn't it have looked totally different than that sketch? They don't know who they're looking for with these sketches. They have a sketch, you know, and it's got the guy with the hat and everything. And it basically looks like it, you know, came out of a, you know, old gangster movie or something, you know, you, are, you dirty rat, you killed my brother. You know, I mean... Come on, you know, it looks like an old time, you know, basically if, you know, you would have drawn, the only thing missing from you was like an eye patch or a scar or something, you know, and they basically did that from people who saw some, you know, somebody on the trails and everything, and then they, uh, they did it from what they thought the image looked like in the video that they had, um, and then they come up with this young guy. Like I said, this young guy could have very well been Daniel Pearson, but they didn't identify him as Daniel Pearson at the time. So they thought, well, you know, we want to talk to this guy. They say, we believe this person is responsible for the murders. That's what they say, right? They're responsible for the deaths of these two little girls, you know. But I don't think that means that they think Daniel Pearson is responsible I think that that's just a sketch that they had that was probably based on Daniel Pearson. And they said, well, what if it wasn't Daniel Pearson? Let's go ahead and put that one out there. You know, it's I, I, I remember seeing it described by another uh, law enforcement officer as they thought it was a Hail Mary. They thought it was just chucking it up there saying, let's see if it works. And it's very possible it could have been that. But remember. Up until the time they revealed that young guy sketch, we were looking for somebody totally different. So how do we know we're not looking for somebody totally different now? You know, so that's where we're at with that. All right. 
Um, let me check the chat here real quick. Uh, oops. Well, we talked. She knows that I think it's wrong, and she's okay with that. Um, she knows, or I know that she doesn't think it's wrong, and I'm okay with that. Um, I think she says that law enforcement knows where Ron was that day. But do they? They know where he was, but do they know when he was? That's the whole issue right there. That's the issue. And you have to think about it in terms of when he asked for the alibi and what times he asked for it to be covered. It's all just... It, it's not in any way, shape, or form. You can't deny that no matter what happened, you know, no matter when he left, no matter where he went, no matter what he did, you know, he could have been hanging out with Elvis. We don't know. But we do know what time he asked his cousin to say he wasn't there. That's what we can draw. That's the conclusion we can draw. Now, here is my theory on why nobody saw Bridge Guy that day. And this is why with it, this is why they can't find him because they're looking for people that, you know, well, we got to see if we can find the person this person saw. This person, that person were seeing each other. They were talking about each other, you know. The sketches, everybody just forget about it. Forget about it. Haunted partner, Heather, how's it going? Hope I'm not missing anybody else. I'm sure I am. Uh -huh. But forget about the sketches and everything. Forget about the descriptions. Nobody saw him because he came from the south side. He walked from his house to the bridge, came from that side, was there. You know, they're turned around. The girls are turned around, you know, and everything. Now think about it. We have 43 seconds of audio. We have 43 seconds of audio and we have a lot of commentary about that audio from law enforcement. Doug says, I believe was the one that said, it's the stuff of nightmares. How does he know that out of 43 seconds, especially when we know about where it ends, okay? We know that it ends with guys down the hill. He talks about girl talk. They talk about girl talk, okay? I think people say there's a rumor that there were two videos, okay? Two recordings. That's very possible. Very possible. But I think the first recording, if there if there is more than one, I think the one that uh, ends with down the hill is the last one we have. If there's another one, it happened before that. And that's where you're getting the girl talk type stuff. Okay. And that girl talk could have been as simple, you know, because, you know, um, Mike Patty said that and here's where they get, you know, I, I had a discussion with some people. I was trying to explain to them where the remarks about the creepy guy came from, because they didn't really say that. They never said, hey, is that creepy guy still behind us or whatever? They never said that. What happened was they, you know, Mike said, well, I think the reason, you know, everybody's trying to figure out why did they record him? Well, I'm going to get to that. Everybody's trying to figure out, you know, why did they record him? Okay. And Mike said, I think one of the reasons might have been because sometimes Libby would do this thing where she would take a video of somebody and she would send it to Abby and she would say, See that? That's your boyfriend. Or, you know, stuff like that. And then he said that other times maybe she would send him a picture of a guy or she would get home and she would say, Hey, hey, Papa, look at this weird guy that we saw at the trails today. You know, that sort of thing. That's where the creepy guy stuff came from. You know, if they were doing girl talk, we don't know what it was. All right. But we do know that at some point they're concerned because they say, well, the trail ends here. So there's nowhere to go. They're discussing what they're going to do. Why are they discussing that? Because they know this guy came up behind him, walked past him, might have talked to him then. He saw what he was dealing with. Two young girls. Okay. Okay. They, you know, he walked on past them and they thought, well, you know, maybe he'll just keep going across the bridge. But then he turned around. 
when he turned around, Libby is acting like she's taking a picture of Abby, but she leans over and records him walking. The reason she started that recording is because he turned around. That's when they got scared. They knew they were trapped. He had them trapped. He only had to go so far out onto that bridge to be able to look across the valley. He could see all the way back to the turn. And it's like at least three minutes from that turn. He could look all the way down and see the creek. He could see nobody was down there. He knew it. He knew he had him. When he turned around, he'd made up his mind. So he pulls out the gun, tells him, guys, down the hill. Okay. Like I said, I don't know what happened after that. I don't think he was planning to do anything outside. I honestly think he was planning to take them to his house. And something happened. You know, my theory is her phone rang. I think Derek called, her phone rang, and Libby thought she could get her phone out of her pocket quick enough, open it up, and say, you know, turn it on, you know, flick it over, whatever, how she answered it, and say, Dad, help! You know, that's that's what I think, and I think she wasn't quick enough. You know, people... People underestimate the strength of an old person, okay? Um, now, I'm not a young guy, and those young guys at work were just stunned <laughs> at how I could lift twice as much as them, you know? Um, now, I'm not 77, not even close, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's not something you, you, you underestimate the strength of an older guy. Oops, I better change that. You underrate the strength, uh, underestimate the strength of an older guy um, at your own peril because uh, they can be strong. Um, so uh, let me see here. I'm confused. Law enforcement did not think Ron Logan was involved in the murder because they knew where Ron Logan was during the murder. Was it preventing the bridge in June Yes. Yes. What I'm saying is Becky probably is still under the assumption that they had Ron on camera drinking beer when the murders were committed, but that's not true. Um Give me a second here, HCC. I just think he crossed um, here. I'll, I'll, let me, I want to. Anyway, um, they they have him traced to the around the bridge near the bridge area. Yes, and that's what I believe. That's where I think he was right about at that time. I think is when he uh, started in from that bridge and started to cross and then turned around. Um, but I think Becky still believes that. Um, I still, I still think that um, Becky believes that the clients were somehow involved um, and that Ron was has a good alibi. Ron does not have a good alibi because Ron has a receipt from buying fish. He said, well, I was buying fish at the time. Ron bought the fish at like 5.20 p.m. It doesn't take that long to get to Lafayette. Ron called his, his cousin and asked him to lie and say, hey, tell him you picked me up about 2 o'clock. And that we went to Lafayette and we didn't get back till six. So why did he pick before the bodies were even found? Why did he pick that particular time frame? <laughs> anyway, um, I believe he walked through his backyard, through the creek and up the hills, up the hill. But you see, you don't have to go right up where they, you know, people say, well, where he ordered them down, you don't have to go right up right there. There's a little ways you can go past the bridge and it's not quite as steep. It's, you know, a lot less steep. So um, he could have ordered them down the hill, you know, in that vein, in that direction there. But um, yeah, I think he did. And I think he crossed the, the creek. People say 
you know, well, well you know, we couldn't cross the creek. Yeah, we, there, there's the shallows there at the sandbar are very shallow. And even so, he's got those waders. He could have put the waders on, crossed the creek, and then took the waders off. You know, when he got to, when he got done, that's why his pants wouldn't be uh, wet. But it answers all those questions. How you know? How did a guy kill two girls? Um, nobody saw him coming. Nobody saw him leaving. How did he get away with all the blood all over him and everything? You know. Well, if he did it there on the spot, which they do think that the bodies were killed where they were found, but then they were moved and staged. Okay. Um, so what they know is that the girls were killed in that spot. Now, where did he move them to? Well, I don't think he moved them very far. I think he just hid them for the time being. And I think that's why nobody saw them when they swept that area before. They didn't look where they were in a hurry. It was light was fading. They knew they were, you know, at this point, they were looking for somebody that might be at least hurt. And they were trying to find, you know, they were just kind of trying to cover a large area. They probably could have very easily overlooked the girls. At some point, somebody washed down the area, you know. So, you know, I showed you the other night how that could have been accomplished. Um, so somebody washes down the area. And now you've got a weird crime scene with the area washed down they were moved and put in a certain position and there was a nordic rune carved in the tree above abby's head okay um now these things um like i said the the things that i have that i can't tell you exactly where my uh the uh the source of the information comes from like I said, I can't burn my source. I've got to protect that source. But you're going to see these things coming out very, very soon. For a while, I couldn't even mention it. I could allude to it, but I couldn't even mention it. Now I'm able to mention it, which means it's getting very close. Cold pumpkin spice coffee. Yeah, I'm one of those pumpkin spice people but only until the end of November. Once Thanksgiving is over, I can't do the pumpkin anymore. Then I'm on the peppermint mocha. All right, let me see if there's any more questions here. That uh, And by the way, people, if you don't know who Hoosier Cold Cases is, he's another uh, content creator and he's got great stuff. So uh, he's worth a sub. And uh, let's see here. Charles, I am whatever makes the least hungry. Um, let me see here. I would say probably just threw some leaves and sticks and stuff over them for the time being. Because, see, where they were found is like a little bowl, like a little shallow area. And if you just, like, threw leaves, sticks and leaves over them and everything real quick, you could just look right over that area and you wouldn't think anything, you know. I think a lot of it was just dumb luck. I think he uh, was in a panic and just dumb luck that he managed to get by with it for the first night. And once he got by with it that first night, you could just see that confidence growing in him when you look at the uh, videos. And here's the thing. I've said this before. Um, oh, oh, Black Screen Media, you're the one that wanted the uh, uh, Negan. Um, I got to find. Hey, babe. I'll get, I'll get Laura to, <laughs> um, now what was I doing? Oh, you were telling, yeah. Um, you're looking across the, uh, you know, you don't see him right away. Oh, can you look in my pictures here? The pictures of you and me when the, the Halloween with Negan, when I was Negan, I'm trying to find this stuff here. It, it, yeah. Just look in the, in the, it would be on the camera, the camera thing. So See what I mean, guys? I can hand my wife my phone and it's like, you know, it's unlocked and everything. You know, I don't have any secrets from her. <laughs> she knows that she only shares my heart with Henry Cable. I mean, did, did that, did I say that out loud? <laughs> um, who, by the way, is coming back Man of Steel 2 is a reality, people. I'm so happy. Anyway. <laughs> Um, Laura's going to work on finding the pictures of me as Negan. Um, 
And um, anyway, what I was saying, he freaked. And I think you can see him getting a little more confidence as it goes on. But like I've said before, Thursday, the 16th, that picture hit the media. Find me a picture dated after that of Ron Logan with that hat on. That hat disappeared Thursday afternoon, early evening. The minute that picture came out, that hat disappeared. The hat with the dent, the hat with the pins on it and everything. I don't know. I don't know. You hear a lot of stuff. You hear a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, some of it could have some kind of credibility to it. You know, you have the Sons of Odin, which if you've got uh, um, Nordic runes, you know. Hmm, that is a good question right there. But anyway, you know, Sons of Odin is a white supremacist group, so you know they've got to exist somewhere in Indiana. Um, if you could interview one or two people, anyone regarding the case, who would you choose? Oh, man, let me think. Well, Ron, if he was alive, but well, I guess we can't count him. Um, I think Tony Liggett, uh, Tony Liggett and, um, whatever the FBI agent, the FBI agent that was involved, the one, the, the, the lead agent in charge. I think those two, I think those two would probably be the best. Yeah, Tech Death. What's up? I was I tried to put the game on. I got my my little um, tablet here, and I tried to put it on. I have uh, Paramount Plus, which is supposed to be. Oh, you know, is it? Oh, damn it! I keep forgetting. They switched now. Fox Fifty Nine has. Oh, damn it! Anyway, um, I'll just kind of catch up later. Um, <laughs> Dean Johnson, did you miss anything? I yeah, a little bit. Uh, Big E, <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, well, they seem to not secular. What I know of is the Nordic runes. There was a Nordic rune, an ansus carved into, um, the tree, which looks like a letter F. That gave a lot of different, um, uh, a lot of different, um birth to a lot of different rumors about a, a letter being carved but it's not really a letter it's it's a nordic rune it's an ansus and the way they know that is because um the girls themselves were arranged to form another nordic rune and uh hey georgia girl good to see you uh so um the the Nordic runes, you know, the one that the girls themselves were positioned in, um, we do know that Abby was leaning up against a tree because we've heard, um, I can, I, you know, like I said, I know that some of those leaked text messages are true. Some of them are a little bit fake to the, the Erskines, but some of it is true. Um, and the positioning being a, uh, a Nordic rune that's where they know that the that it's an ansus and not a uh, letter F. So, but those are I, that's the, the kind of thing that I think is just meant to mislead. I really do. I think that's I think they knew that, um, and I think that they knew that it was done, you know, on the sly. It wasn't really anything, you know, that was. It wasn't anything that was supposed to be a real legitimate clue. So, um, anyway, <laughs> so what you have, once you see it, for me, it was the moment I realized 
that the picture of BG is actually reversed. It's a mirror image of Ron Logan walking because the camera, when she when she turned it or whatever, it actually, there was something, somebody told me that at the time she was doing something with the phone that had something to do with, what's it called? Um, <laughs> uh, not TikTok, the other one, Snapchat or something. Aha. And um, they, it, it reverses the image and it reversed the image. I had an image that I couldn't get to save and I'm going to find it and redo it and everything, but it actually flipped the image around so that it was the right way. And everything is perfectly lined up. You could take the two pictures and put them over each other and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So um, we definitely have Ron Logan. That's definitely the, uh, Okay. All right. Here is the best I can do right now. But that is a picture of me as Negan. I'm going the wrong way here. Right there. That's a picture of me as Negan with the bat, with my hair slicked back. <laughs> um, here's another one. I wanted to be more like the comic book Negan because that Negan to me was uh, he was the man. He he was Negan in the comics. I was so, you know, I love him still. Um, but just now this guy is my brother-in-law dressed as the Joker. He does the Joker every year. Look at him. He is awesome. He is awesome. He's done several different versions of the Joker. He's done the Heath Ledger Joker. The uh, He's never done the, the new one, the Joaquin Phoenix, but he's done the Heath uh, Ledger Joker, and he's done um, uh, the Jack Nicholson Joker, Cesar Romero Joker. I mean... <laughs> Looks like Marlon Brando. Anonymous one, what do you want to do? Why do you want to talk like that? Why do you want to tell people that look like Marlon Brando? It's just... I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love that. I have a, I have a shirt that says, I am Negan. That was this, the saying they all had. I said, who's Negan? I am Negan, you know. Um... I got one of those. Today I'm wearing my Schoolhouse Rock t-shirt. Schoolhouse Rock is something I believe in, I mean, big time. And if you're young, you don't remember it. But Schoolhouse Rock made little songs and ditties and everything. And they played it in between your cartoons on Saturday morning instead of trying to sell you cereal and action figures. And it was really cool, you know, and it taught us things, you know, um, I was the only kid in my class in third grade that could ramble off the preamble to the Constitution because I could sing the little song. We the people in order to form a more perfect union. And you probably remember, I'm just a bill. Oh, yes. Well, actually, I'm just a bill. Oh, yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here hiding from hell. Anyway. Um. Yeah, I kind of like Jack Nicholson's Joker, too. You know? <laughs> Masked freak terrorizes. Wait till they get a load of me. Ooh. 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 <laughs> oh, Jack Nicholson there. All right, so... Um, now we are, uh, really off to a good start. Uh, I have seen this. You, you got the old, uh, the Friday thing hooking up words and phrases and clauses like either now or never. Hey, that's clever. Yep. A little bit. You got it, girl. <laughs> Your old Kate list. You remember schoolhouse rock? I love it. I love it. I told Laura we need to, um, she and I need to put together a schoolhouse rock 
uh, show that we can go to schools and do remember the old convocations when people come in and everything. And, uh, you know, now when I got into like middle school and everything, we used it as a chance to, you know, run out behind the bleachers and smoke weed, but, um, still, you know, <laughs> um, I do not know what's going on with Ron's property. I heard, um, that they were, his son was having trouble keeping it or something. Yeah. Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> yes. Ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? All right. So. And it's off to the White House where I stand in a line with a lot of other bills for the president to sign. Yeah. All right, folks, let's see here. We are about at an hour. I'm kind of starving. <laughs> but uh, yes, do remember the fundraiser that we're doing for the book. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to make money. As people say, you know, I see I, I a lot of people, you know, talk and everything. And I see a lot of people talking that, um, you know, oh, he said he wasn't going to try to make money off of the case. That's not what I'm doing. I really don't uh, want to make the money. Um, what I want to do is give away a book for donations, and that's what I'm trying to get accomplished. So um, we've been dropping the uh, the PayPal, Venmo, um, Cash App stuff. You know, um, anything you send is very much appreciated. You will get a free copy of the book when it's done, which should be within a couple of months here. And um, then when um, when it is, you know, like I said, when I, I'm done, you can do what you want with it. It'll be an e-copy. You can pass it on for free. You know, I don't care. It's not like I'm trying to sell the book. I'm not trying to do that. And it's not going to be just about the murders. Um, it's going to be about, you know, a lot of different things. It's going to be like a printed version of one of my live streams in chapters. Yes, dear. My name is Laura Snay and I approve this message. Her name is Laura Snay and she approves this message. <laughs> <laughs> So the, anyway, so that's what that's all about. Um, and let me see here. So you were not into the conspiracy theory. What happened to your friend who had a theory about the X-Men? I am still waiting on her to get, um, she has, she's a, she's a very busy person. Um, she's like a hairdresser extraordinaire and she is booked like bubbity bubbity, you know, and she's trying to make some money, you know, and I don't blame her at all. So, um, I'm not, I've never been into the conspiracy theory ever. Um, my original, you know, uh, being, um, my original POI with Daniel Pearson, uh, I didn't think it was any kind of a conspiracy or anything. I just thought that, you know, well, I guess kind of a little bit because I thought that maybe people were helping him to keep it secret, but I, I, you know, this explains much more what happened because there were a lot of how would that happen type stuff. Um, with Daniel Pearson, but with this, it explains everything. It does. It explains everything. But anyway, oh, I understand, Gail, but, but the point is that I'm being true to what I said in the beginning, um, that I'm not trying to make money off of this case, and I'm not, you know. Um, I just, I do like to eat, so if I'm going to take a couple months off work to write the book, I just want to be able to contribute to my home while I'm doing that, and that's what I'm what I'm doing here. Um, and no, I don't think that Kelsey, no. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So yes, um, I've got, uh, I think I've got a cousin coming in, um, today to, uh, do some karaoke. -ing. So, uh, we might be doing that here in a little bit. Um, well, see, the thing is, um, if you're talking about the interrogation, um, he never really admits to anything in that interrogation. Now, anything that he's told anybody since then, yeah, he's just telling people what they want to hear. <laughs> so that's what I believe, at least. I believe they're just telling people what they want to hear. <laughs> so, yes. Um, that's the deal with the book. So if you want to contribute, we have the uh, uh, PayPal, Venmo, uh, Cash App, 
stuff here that's going on. And like I said, I'm going to keep track of everybody that donates. Um, when it's ready, you guys will be the first ones. I'll just ship those copies right on out to you. And um, I will be doing it. Also, if you subscribe, I will be doing certain invite only live streams where we will have a chance to discuss, like I'll read a part of the chapter or whatever, and we'll have a chance to discuss what your feelings are, give you some feedback as we go. So that's going to be something cool too. Um, so anyway, if you want to contribute to that, I would really appreciate it. We'll have a, um, at some point have some kind of a thank you thing where everybody would be, you know, honored in some way. And, um, we're going to uh, look into some more videos here coming up. We'll have a few more live streams coming up um, this week because oh, oh, there's a little dog going by. Okay, guys. They're live streaming. What's the matter with you? Little tiny dog. That's what I said. Y'all out of here. Um, so anyway, uh, my dogs are terrible, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's what the uh, money for the book goes to is just basically to, to keeping my end of the house up while I'm writing the book. And I, I am, I am going to dedicate eight to 10 hours a day. We're going to get this thing done as quick as we possibly can, because I want, but it's going to, you know, I want to do quality too. So I want to make sure I can give you something that's worth having, um, and something that you're really going to be interested in. All right. Now, remember also that I really, truly, I don't want to make any money. I just want to catch a killer. And even if I have to catch him posthumously, I still want to catch him. And uh, Lucci's house bully breed is what we uh, uh, give the money to here. The money I make off of uh, fa uh, about Facebook, YouTube, which my first payment is coming up in a couple of weeks here. Like, well, in about a week. Um, they pay between the 21st and the 26th of the month for the month before. Um, you have to get over a threshold first. So that money's coming up. So we're going to be able to give uh, Lucci's house some money soon, which I'm so excited about. And uh, look them up on Facebook, L-U-C-C-I, Lucci's House Bully Breed Rescue. Um, I think it's just actually just Lucci's House Bully Rescue. But I like to put the breed in there because it makes it, you know, that you, then you're like, oh, okay. You know, they're not out there trying to, you know, like, bail Biff Cannon out of jail or anything like that. So uh, that's where the money is going to go, folks. So, you know, um, YouTube is a is a, a good place. They're going to give me money to give to dogs. And my dogs are hungry. So I want to make sure they get fed. All right, man. Thanks for coming by and doing the live stream here. Um, we might just do another one uh, very, very soon. I'm going to look into a couple of things. we got another video to watch that I want you to look at, which is going to explain a little bit why some of this stuff is going on. Why did they squirrel, cake and coin, us? Um, <laughs> so um, make sure that uh, you, cho you, cho to cho 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 choose to tune in for that one. Um, check out r and You'll see that video because I'm going to show it to you and you can watch it in first and then like you'll know what it is. And then when people are like, you know, watching, you can go, oh, hey, man, this part's cool. So <laughs> image analysis and detection. Give them a like and give them a sub. And don't forget chooch, choo choo crime tube. You'll love it. I do. And I highly recommend it. I'm trying to figure out how to feature channels on here like Hoosier Cold Cases, Cold Truth, um, and uh, Chooch, and r &M and Image Analysis. So um, I want to, uh, I, once I figure that out, I'm pretty close to figuring it out, I think. We'll put those things up and um, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to check those channels out anytime you want. Um, also, we don't like Matt Ryan at all right now. <laughs> I mean, he's a, our, our line sucks. Our line sucks. Horrible. They're not giving him any time at all. Um, as for uh, the baseball situation, I know um, Lil Bit's uh, going to be you know, happy with, with any kind of uh, advancement by the Braves. But, um, well, you know, you just have to, you know, hope for the best. But 
Cleveland has advanced, haven't they? Yes, they have. So anyway, I'm going to get on out of here so I can eat, folks. But uh, we love you, man. Love you so much. You guys are the fantasticest group of people that ever watched a video. Give me a thumbs up on this one here. Pass it around. Uh, get people talking. I would really love to get... Uh, oh, oh, I forget. Um, it doesn't look like it's on here because I probably forgot to save it. I have a Twitter now. A Twitter. A tweet. <laughs> we do have a, a Twitter at... Uh, at... Delphi After Doc on Twitter. That's where I will be. Uh, I'll be also be releasing um, reminders about live streams and so forth and so on. And we will also have the uh, information there if you want to donate to the book project. So anyway, love you guys. We will see you next time, which is going to be either tomorrow or Tuesday. I promise you it won't be long. And uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up tonight. Uh, we just love you to death. And as always, everybody, when I'm scooting out of here, I wish you peace, love, leather, and base. Talk to you later, folks.